Stevens. I'm a dark Indian woman, and it's an honour to do the acknowledgement of country today. So as we come together today, we acknowledge the Darug and the Gundundara people as the traditional custodians of the land upon which we gather. Let's also acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands from which you have travelled from and the lands that you've travelled across to get here this week. We acknowledge them as the people to which God gave this land to tend and find sustenance and refuge in and to flourish in, fully alive in Christ and impassioned with his purpose, one generation after another, we acknowledge that the traditional elders met and led the Darug and Gundundara nations, making way for one generation after another of these, of these nations and their people. And for us, Jesus, I pray that as we come together this week and beyond as we return to our places of ministry, that you would use us, the leaders of your army of salvation in this state, to help bring your work of healing and restoration, of love, acceptance and true identity in you to all people of our traditional nations. Give us eyes to see where your spirit is already moving and give us compassion and humility to truly love, in your name, the people of our traditional nations. And everyone said... Spiritual renewal is a continual inner process of being made new by the power of God at work in our lives. As we are created uniquely, our experience of being renewed is often unique too. However, the outcome of the process always results in us becoming more like Jesus and living a life that reflects Him better. Spiritual renewal is often connected to us lifting our eyes in surrender acknowledging our need for and dependency on God, being on our knees as people of prayer, seeking God for answers and believing for God to act, not only in our own life, but in our towns and cities. Opening our hearts, being authentic and vulnerable, willing for the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to bring conviction, hope and healing. having arms stretched wide, embracing a world that desperately needs hope and being led by the Spirit to the people we are to intentionally walk alongside. Staying Jesus-centred, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. So why is this important? A genuine connection to Jesus brings fullness of life and hope regardless of circumstances. We can't live authentically missional lives for long on our own. We know. We've tried. And life becomes pretty exciting when we seek after God and are willing to be led and empowered by Him. There is no greater joy than doing what He asks and being the people He created us to be. Oh, 
from the Lord upon us right now to be the people of God just as we were always intended to be. This call and beautiful invitation is one of alignment that encourages us to fully embrace the truth of who we are in Jesus and all we're created to be and do in partnering with him in his mission. As we heard in the clip just now, spiritual renewal is the continual inner process of being made new by the power of God at work in our lives. And it's key to us being the people of God, just as he intends. Put another way, spiritual renewal is the endeavor of intentionally becoming more acquainted with the God who lives inside us by his spirit and who rests upon us, empowering us to be his people and witness to the truth of the gospel. The greatest purpose we can have as God's people is to know him and to make him known. Seeking spiritual renewal and hungering after the more of God empowers us to live out the promise of Jesus to us that we will do all the works he did and even greater things in the days to come. That's from John 14, 12. God is on the move and he is calling his church to wake up to all he's doing in our world and all he wants to do through us as his people. The Salvation Army is at its best when we are bold in our proclamation of the gospel and in our prayers, expecting the Lord to move in power when we pray and when we live out the command to love our neighbor through meeting needs in his name without discrimination. Mrs. Minnie L. Carpenter, the wife of General George Carpenter, gloriously exclaimed, the Salvation Army was born in the fire of Pentecostal force and can never survive if it descends to the level of ordinary religious performance. I'm in agreement with many. Friends, the gospel is urgent. The world desperately needs to know and experience the healing love of Jesus. We are his hands and feet, but we need to ensure that we're spiritually renewed every day and battle ready with our eyes high, firmly fixed on Jesus, our hearts open to the Holy Spirit and his leading, on our knees, contending with the Lord in prayer, looking for the way that God is moving. 
He needs those who are contending in these days. We must renew our hunger for prayer and intercession and with our arms outstretched, embracing a world that so desperately needs hope. Everything we need to be the people of God, just as he intends, will come from the place of spiritual renewal. It's a daily walk of adventure, not for the faint hearted, but the best life that we were created to live. If we are an army seeking spiritual renewal, I believe the Lord will accomplish incredible things through us in the days to come. Let's do it together. I am with you and I am praying for you.
you gave me to drink. I was homeless and you opened your doors and when I was naked you gave me a coat. When I was weary you helped me find rest. When I was anxious you calmed all my fears. When I was little you taught me to read. When I was lonely you gave me your love. I was in prison and you came to my cell. On a sick bed you cared for my needs. In a strange country, you made me at home. Seeking employment, you found me a job. Hurt in the battle, you bound up my wounds. Searching for kindness, you held out your hand. When I was black or Chinese or white, mocked and insulted, you carried my cross. And when I was old, you bothered to smile. When I was restless, you listened and cared. You saw me covered with spit and with blood. You knew my features, though grimy with sweat. When I was laughed at, you stood by my side. When I was happy, you shared in my joy. I tell you, whenever you did this for one of the least important of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. God of extravagant mercy, with hands outstretched, you have poured out wonder and pleasure and delight, goodness and beauty and bounty. So take these offerings, Lord. Take them, we pray, as our protest against all that is evil and ugly and impoverished, trivial and wretched and tyrannical in this world and ourselves. And thus may we and others know ourselves to be blessed. Amen. Well, February 28, 2022 was the day that transformed our community. Um, it, in, it completely transformed the entire Northern Rivers region here. You'll see by some of the footage that I've uh, captured from some of the uh, television networks, um, just the extent of the floods that went through our region. Now we had two and a half meters more water than any flood on record. It tipped out at 14 and a half meters and now um, it's not just the height that is uh, mind-boggling, but it's the uh, the amount of cubic meterage of or volume of water that rolled through our houses. Water that went up to roofs and previous floods that had never even touched the floorboards of those places. It was also uh, part of the largest civilian rescue operation uh, ever in Australian disaster history, where the Tinney Army went out and rescued uh, thousands of people. If we didn't have that, more people would have lost their lives. Our businesses were completely devastated, including our family store which had four and a half meters of water go through it and uh, 12 months on from the flood whilst all the debris from the streets is now cleaned up um, we are still in a state of disaster in our community um, our council says this is going to be a 10-year project to get our community back to uh, normal you can see here one of our local schools they're saying three to four years before our schools get back as you drive around town, these are recent photos. We've got businesses that are still boarded up and surrounded by uh, fencing. Homes that are completely uninhabitable um, and lots to go on. Debris still in trees in creeks around our river. We see lots of construction fencing everywhere and uh, businesses completely boarded up. And uh, whether they come back um, is still being debated. Insurance and uh, government red tape is holding so many things up. We're still waiting on the buyback scheme and other things to roll out. Only one house has officially been offered a buyback in the flood prone land. It's a long road to recovery for our community. We just have empty shelves of buildings all over our community. You can still see the mud on the wall. And when you walk past an open window, that strong smell of the flood still gets you. 
Our council still has footpaths that need attending where uh, bricks just got washed away in the flood water. And all around, um, there's just building after building that's a construction site. Our council recently did an audit of the CBD and they estimate that about 50% of the businesses that were open before flood um, have reopened again. Um, it's a completely different um, layout now for those shops. A lot of them have gone a lot more flood ready, uh, bare brick walls, a lot less paint and all those kind of things. So it's a very different um, scope in our community. A lot of places uh, just won't ever and won't reopen post floods. There's our flood marker on the wall, it goes to 13 metres, our flood topped in at 14 and a half metres. Now, not all the things of our flood have been devastating. We got the opportunity to bring the Wiggles to our community to provide hope and joy in the lead up to Christmas. Uh, we did three free concerts, and uh, here's Lockie playing our uh, baby grand piano at Northern River Salvos. Um, he did a private little concert for our boys, which was awesome. And uh, we got to do uh, yeah three concerts, 500 at each concert. So 1,500 uh, people got to come and experience the Wiggles um, in the lead up to Christmas, which was fantastic. They're some of the um, real highlights of our year. We also got blessed by the team at City Salvos in Sydney. Um, thank you to Mitch and all his um, amazing people and all the core that donated presents and sent up. We did three times more hampers than we've done previously here in the Northern Rivers. Uh, we gave out over $50,000 worth of gift cards to our community and about 29 pallets worth of toys. It was a massive effort. We packed over 650 hampers um, and they got distributed to all the communities around the Northern Rivers here. Um, it was a real team effort. We also got to provide a dinner uh, that was sponsored by Coca-Cola into uh, one of the pod villages. For a lot of those that have been flood affected, they've now been housed in uh, a pod village in our uh, community. There is 11 of them that have opened. We also got heaps of great support from the Kmart Wishing Tree as well. Um, so there's some of the exciting things that have happened in our community. You can also see now here on the screen, um, a whole bunch of us pastors were invited by the council to host a healing and recovery service on the 28th of February, the one year anniversary of our floods. And it was an absolute honor to uh, host and MC that night and to bring a bit of uh, hope into our community as we continue the rebuild and recovery. Uh, this is the first milestone of many as we move forward for the day that transformed our entire Northern Rivers region. There is so much uh, going on and there are a huge challenges ahead, but there's also brighter days ahead. We're really excited by uh, the opportunities that God is placing in front of us as we move forward. And uh, we thank you for your prayer and, and your support. Just continue to support us. Come and visit us, um, bring your core, bring uh, your music teams, come and help us um, provide hope in our community as we continue to rebuild on this long journey ahead. God bless you each and have a great one. Dear loving, living Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have, that we can come to you at any time of the day or night and anywhere, in any place. Father God, you are living loving, energizing, and a Father who keeps His promise. Father, we want to praise You, we want to adore You, we want to honor You, we want to worship You. Father, we just want the Salvation Army, which You brought out, Lord, through William Booth and Catherine Booth, to be the shining light for the world. Father, through their ministry, Revival came into a lost world, a world which was covered in poverty and differences. But at that time, Lord, your spirit came and brought the revival through them and the pioneering officers and people who loved you and who were even ready to die for you, Lord. Then your spirit came down on them as it came on the Pentecost day, Lord. And they were able to go into different parts of the world because they were revived. They got the revelation from you. Father, we ask for our present army the same blessing, Lord. Lord, revival can only happen when we are ready for it. Revival can only happen when we confess and say, Lord, we are sorry. And so, Lord, we ask you the present army, the present leaders, the present salvationists, the present local officers, the present young soldiers, from a baby 
to the elder. Father, we ask you that there'll be a spiritual revival among us, Lord, not just for showing off, not just to tell the world that we are different. No, we just want to live for you, Lord. Let the revival start in each one of us, Lord, each one of the congregation, each one of the soldiers, each one of the local officers, each one of the newly commissioned officers, and each one of the leaders who are leading us. Father, give them the spiritual revival and let them know, Lord, that your power, your energy is there for anyone who asks for it. Lord, let the revival, let the spiritual revival start in us, Lord. Let your name be honored and glorified. Let the revival start in me, Father. Let the revival start in your people so we can bring many more into your fold. Let your name be honored and glorified. I ask all this humble petition in the mighty and matchless name of our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. И сказал Господь Моисею, говоря, «Я услышал ропот сынов Израилевых. Скажи им, вечером будете есть мясо, а поутру насытитесь хлебом, и узнаете, что я Господь, Бог ваш». Вечером налетели перепелы и покрыли стан, а поутру лежала роса около стана. Роса поднялась, и вот на поверхности пустыни нечто мелкое, круповидное, Мелкая, как ини на земле. И увидели сыны Израилевы, и говорили друг другу, «Что это? Ибо мы не знали, что это». И Моисей сказал им, «Это хлеб, который Господь дал вам в пищу». Вот что повелел Господь. «Собирайте его каждый по стольку, сколько ему съесть, по гомору на человека, по числу душ, сколько у кого в шатре. Собирайте». Hi friends, for those who I haven't met, my name's Sally and I'm a core officer down here in Canberra ACT. I absolutely love the community that I'm a part of and what God is doing among us here. Recently when I was praying about a biblical basis for spiritual renewal, the passage that God kept giving to me over and over again was Exodus 16. Fresh out of slavery, God's children wandering in the desert. They don't have the Ten Commandments yet, and Mount Sinai is just around the corner. So they don't yet fully understand the life they've been brought into. In a lot of ways, they're still stuck looking back. And on top of all of this, they're hungry and they're thirsty. So they've got a serious case of hangry happening. We read that the whole community, eyes back on where they were, a grumbling saying, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. Moses is confronted by their complaints and he takes them straight to Yahweh. And Yahweh's solution is to rain down manna and quail from heaven with the instruction that each one is to gather what they need and to take extra to tie over for the Sabbath. This isn't a moment of failure or defeat which is the impression that we get from the Israelites. It's a picture of God's provision. The story points us to the way God calls his children to live. They are to be dependent on him for their well-being, their sustenance and security, and for their safety. And this dependence isn't unique to the desert. God calls us each today, now, still into the same dependency in a lifestyle of trust in him. Out of slavery in the desert, Yahweh was establishing a way forward for his people. They were dependent on him in getting out of slavery, and this dependence was to remain and remain and continues to remain through the whole of God's story. We hear again and again in the scriptures, I am the Lord your God, a God of relationship. We get the impression from the description within Exodus 16 that this manna from heaven is small, it's plain, and it's simple. Yet it still speaks to the extravagant generosity of Yahweh in providing for his children. If you know the story well, 
Some in the community pay no attention to Moses' instruction and they grab more than they need. The next day when they wake up, they find that their food stinks and it's infested with maggots. In the act of hoarding, they missed the blessing. This isn't the only time in scripture when God's people step outside of trust and take control into their own hands. We also know, I know, and I'm sure that you know in our own walk with God, how good we are at taking back dependence and trust upon ourselves. We hustle in our own postures of survival instead of trusting in the simplicity of the ways God continues to provide for us. Like the Israelites in the desert who grabbed more than their share to tie them over for a few days, we can be people who hoard. We hoard control, comfort, power at the cost of intimacy and connection with God. Jesus, in all wisdom, later prayed for us and showed us how to pray by saying, give us this day our daily bread. Spiritual renewal can look like many things. Arms outstretched, on our knees, pressing in and seeking. And it can also look like empty hands. Trusting in God's provision in each moment is an act of spiritual renewal. Finding intimacy and connection, provision for all aspects of our lives, in and through and from our relationship with God. Later in the Gospels, Jesus refers to himself in John 6.35 as the bread of life. He points back to the manna that sustained God's people in the desert for 40 years, reiterating that this was his father's provision before declaring that he himself is sent from heaven as the bread of life. In Exodus 16, the manna sustained God's people in the desert for 40 years, but Jesus is the bread of life that we need to sustain us for all of eternity. The Israelites complained in the desert. They considered their hunger and thirst as a sign that they would have been better off where they didn't have to feel those things, where they didn't have to feel what it was to go without or to be called out from. Yet Jesus in the Beatitudes declares that those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. So my prayer, and I pray this for you too, and I invite you to pray it with me, is that we each would have a renewed sense of God's provision, God's generous provision, the simplicity and intimacy of connection with him. That our hunger and thirst for spiritual renewal would bring us back to trust in the relationship we have with God our Father. That instead of complaining and grumbling, may we find new ways of embracing this new life we've been brought into, living as the people of God, trusting in his provision and posturing ourselves in such a way that we are obedient in hungering and thirsting after things of this kingdom over any temporary satisfaction we could find in this world. Would you pray that with me? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The words of Jesus. Are you tired? Worn out? Are you burnt out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me see how to recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely question, are you tired? Are you worn out? Yes. (laughs) Yes is the answer. And Jesus says, come to me and I'll show you. 
will show you how to take a rest. Spirit sound, rushing wind, fire of God for living. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent, turn from sin, revival and the smoldering breath of God. with you. 
May he place a hunger within you to know him and to make him known every day. May you keep your eyes high, fixed on Jesus. May your hearts be open to the Holy Spirit and his leading. May you hunger and desire to contend with the Lord in prayer and intercession. And may your arms be outstretched in love to embrace those in your community that so desperately need hope. I bless you abundantly in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.